Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and this time I've got a full review for you on the Tier 9 Swedish auto-loading heavy tank, the Emil II. This vehicle packs 120mm main armament with four rounds, giving you 1,600 average damage per magazine. Combine this with pretty much impenetrable frontal turret armor when you're using the gun depression of this tank, and you have an absolute monster on your hands. If that sounds like your cup of tea, stick around, I got some Ace Tanker gameplay coming right up after I give you a full rundown down of the statistics and show you how it stacks up compared to some of its tier 9 competition and if you have no interest in playing the tier 9 auto loading Swedish heavy tank then I'll show you how to take them out effectively on the battlefield. So here I'm going to compare the Emil 2 to the tier 9 French auto loading heavy tank the Amex 5120 as well as the tier 9 American medium tank the T54E1 but it, it's kind of more of a heavy medium anyway. Immediately we notice that the Emil has the worst DPM in this comparison and it's sub 2000 DPM at tier 9 which is certainly not great and that's because this vehicle has five seconds extra reload of the magazine compared to the 5120 and four seconds longer than the T54E1. But the reason why the T54E1 pulls so far ahead of the 5120 in the Emil 2 is an amazing intra-clip reload of only 2.22 seconds delay between its shells. Whereas the tier 9 auto-loading heavy tanks have 3.33 seconds intra-clip reload. So this means that you will take 10 seconds after the first shot to fire your full magazine off. But of course, that is going to be a substantial amount of damage we're talking about 1,600 damage in those 10 seconds. And the Emil 2 doesn't struggle with penetration like the T54E1 with 252 millimeters of penetration on its standard APCR round. One thing that's very interesting is even though that the French tank, the AMX 5120, has armor piercing rounds, they have higher penetration and also better shell velocity, 67 meters a second. So to all intents and purposes, the Emil's arm APCR rounds really don't give it any advantage. In fact, it's a, a disadvantage compared to if they were AP, as they will have slightly less normalization. Now onto the gun handling, and it's more bad news for the Emil. The aim time is worse than the 5120, only slightly better than the T54E1. The accuracy is worse than the 5120, only slightly better than the E1. And the dispersion values while moving are significantly worse than the other two vehicles in this comparison, but at least the turret traverse dispersion is way better on the Emil too. Furthermore, there is slightly less bloom after firing at 3.5 compared to 4 seconds, but the problem is, is that when you equip this tank fully with vertical stabilizers, probably vents, possibly even a gun laying drive and some good crew skills, it's the 3.33 seconds unload that prevents you from engaging your opponents quickly, not the aim time issues or the dispersion values. Now onto one of the best aspects about the Emil 2 and that is the depression 12 degrees of gun depression. This allows you to dominate ridge lines that other tanks simply can't. And it's really the vehicle's key advantage over the 5120 with regards to gun handling that only has 9 degrees, but 9 degrees still isn't bad for an auto-loading heavy. And the Emil 2's gun depression is 50% better than the T54E1. It's simply awesome. But you must be careful if your opponents are ever above you, and that's because the elevation limitation of this tank is only 8 degrees. That's right, it aims up less than it aims down. And so use this to your advantage advantage if you ever have the opportunity to get above an Emil 2, it's likely to work out in your favor. Now onto the mobility. The Emil 2 certainly isn't bad. 56 kilometers an hour going forwards, 18 going backwards, but the power to weight ratio on this tank isn't incredible at 14. And so this means that the MX5120 is significantly faster forwards, better backwards, with a better power to weight ratio and the same ground resistances, making the tier 9 Swedish vehicle the slowest in this comparison. And also, one thing that is horrible about the Emil 2 is the turret Reverse speed, 20 degrees a second. That's more like a tier 10 super heavy tank like an E100 than it is a, a tier 9 heavy. And this means if you take the tracks off in a mil 2, it is very easy to out-traverse its turret and be able to avoid its auto-loading 120mm main armament. Now onto the armor, and this is where it's it's good and bad for the Emil 2. One of the best things is that your side armor is now 60mm, whereas previously on the Emil 1 it was only 20 and you could get overmatched by pretty much everything. Also, the vehicle has 80mm at the front, 30 at the rear, that's not really gonna hold up, but look at this turret armor. We are talking about 215 millimeters of turret armor. That's twice the thickness of the 5120. But of course, you should do everything that you can to keep the thick part of your tank towards your opponents, because if they get your side, it's 60, and if they get the rear of the turret, it's an awful 30. So while you might be thinking that 80 millimeters of frontal hull armor doesn't sound fantastic, one thing that's brilliant about the Emil 2 is just how well angled this pike nose is. And so that means that even if you use half the gun depression of this tank, the whole of the upper plate is an auto ricochet, and these parts of the armor up here are about 260. 
160. So if you can hide the beak of the vehicle, which is 115 millimeters thick and only about a 172 millimeters effective from this position, you are going to be doing exceptionally well indeed. But of course, the main aspect about the Emil 2 that is great is look at this turret armor. When you are not using any of your gun depression at all, we are talking about 300 to 360 millimeters of effective turret armor. And if you were thinking that the part below the gun, which is completely flat, was going to be a weak point, well, you're out of luck because this is 360 millimeters thick. And so what this means with the Emil is if it uses its 12 degrees of gun depression, you've pretty much just got no hope in hell of going through this tank even with some of the highest penetration rounds in the game like the Jagdpanzer E100's 420 millimeters of heat penetration. Because the effective armor we're talking about here is now 400 all the way up to 500 at the top of the turret. And so immediately it should be blaringly obvious what your keys to victory are in the Emil 2. Get on a ridge line, use your incredible 12 degrees of gun depression, keep the thick part of your turret facing towards your opponents and laugh as they fail to penetrate you again and again and again. So how can you avoid this? Well, number one, try and get the side of the turret anywhere. We can see the back of it all along this part is 60 millimeters. That is such an easy shot to hit. And this fat head of the Emil 2 quite often sticks around a corner. Secondly, the hole of the top of the tank is only 25 millimeters thick, which means that if you have a 76 millimeter caliber gun, which I'm pretty sure your all tier 7 tank plus vehicles will have, you can overmatch the top of this tank. And remember, its gun elevation is absolutely terrible. This is the maximum extent of its gun elevation. So if you can get here, the Emil can't shoot you and you can overmatch the top of the turret. So apart from that, everything is pretty normal with the Emil 2. 1,700 hit points, not great. 380 meters view range. Well, that's not great, but it's not terrible. And so what about equipment on the Emil 2? Well, I would personally recommend to take vertical stabilizer because you want to reduce your turret traverse dispersion as much as possible. Next, I personally like to use coated optics on this tank because a 380 meters base view range doesn't really feel exceptional. And at least with this and maybe using some consumables, you can get up to 445 meters without any crew skills. And finally, there's a choice. You can either use improved ventilation or I guess you might want to use an enhanced gun lane drive. Personally for me, when you're using vents, even without a skilled crew, your aiming time goes down to 2.5 seconds. And remember, this vehicle has a 3.33 second delay between each one of its shells. And so I personally see the delay between the shots as the limiting factor and not the aim time of the tank. And so I think it's far more sensible to be using vents than a gun lane drive on your Emil 2. So crew skills wise, what would I recommend on the Emil 2? Well, let's take a look at my Kranvan crew for that. And it's important to realize that the commander on this vehicle is also the radio operator as well as the loader. Well, the gunner also operates as a loader on the vehicle. And finally, the driver, his job job is a pure driving role. And so what this means is that I thoroughly recommend that you take all loading skills on your gunner because the commander is just so precious. And so personally for me, I want to take things like Brothers in Arms, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Recon, Repairs. There is an argument that you might want to be taking Concealment, but I don't really think it's that beneficial considering the base concealment of the vehicle is so low anyway as, as it's a heavy. So on my gunner, I want to be taking Brothers in Arms. I want to be taking Safe Stowage to improve the ammo rack durability. Next up, I would want to be taking something like snapshot, repairs, and if you have an exceptionally skilled crew, I think designated target could be very useful to illuminate your targets for a little bit longer when they get out of your view range. And finally, for your driver, I recommend taking off-road driving and clutch braking as soon as you possibly can, because frankly, this vehicle turns like a boat, and I would take repairs, and I wouldn't even bother with concealment. In fact, I might replace that now with something like preventative maintenance or smooth ride even so I can shoot on the move. But anyway, I think that's quite enough theory crafting. Let's get stuck into some gameplay. So here we go, I'm rolling out on the cliff map and I must highlight this replay is not from the current patch. This is from 9.17. And the reason why I don't have any 9.18 gameplay in the Emil 2 is because, frankly, as soon as I got the Kranvang, it just feels like the full fat version of the Emil 2. Well, this feels like the diet version. But nevertheless, you can totally understand that. I mean, Emil 1, Emil 2, Kranvang, you know. But that's not to say that this isn't a great tank, and when you do play it, you are going to be certainly capable of some exceptional games. So on Cliff, what am I looking for here? Well, I want to try and make my way towards the middle, and ultimately, if I can get on top of that hill, well, let's just see what 12 degrees of gun depression and about 400 millimeters of effective turret armor will be able to achieve later on. But unfortunately for me, I get spotted early, and I am playing against old school artillery right now. So I'm clenching my Butox, hoping that the S51 
and the FB3805. Don't quite hit me using some evasive maneuvers, but hopefully we can continue to sneak our way up, or am I going to pull back? I'm just absolutely petrified of the artillery right now, and you should be. You should be terrified of the artillery even with their nerfed versions, because if you do get hit often in the Emil, uh, you will just start to hemorrhage your hit points because apart from the turret, the armor of the tank certainly isn't very thick. Sure, you've got some on the front of the hull, but again, that relies all on the angling of the front of the hull. Ah, not very fair for this 46 here. Oh, I ricochet off him, but I guess that's why we have got a fourth round. There you go. Shutting down a tier seven French tank destroyer before the game has really even begun for him. Poor guy. Certainly not a fair fight. Um, that's really what the Emil do. The Emil 2 can do to quite a lot of tanks. When you think about it, this IS-2, I can easily kill him if I manage to penetrate all four shells, or if I roll slightly high, I kill him in three shots. I kill the Super Pershing unless I roll exceptionally low with my four shells. I can kill the air. I think you're starting to see a pattern here that all lower tier tanks need to be absolutely petrified of the Emil 2. It's very important that you keep your turret towards where you think you're going to be taking shells, as I managed to avoid taking a hit from the LTTB, and if I'd been pointing my turret up the slope where I was actually travelling, I would have lost that 180 hit points for absolutely no reason. Now you might be noticing that my view range is exceptional, that's why I love having the coated optics, and I did have my skilled Kranvang crew in the Emil 2 when I was playing through it, and I feel like with some really good crew skills in the Emil 2, you can play quite an efficient medium tank roll, light tank roll, with a very, very good view range as well. So, remember what I was saying about the Emil 2, and it's all, oh, well, ouch, I should have fully aimed that one really, guys. Remember what I was saying about the Emil 2 and its terrible gun elevation, right? This guy just can't aim up at me. That's one of the reasons why I, I chose this replay to be for my tank review, because that's just the perfect example of how you guys can take advantage of fighting against an Emil 2, and it just so happens that I am in an Emil 2 at the same time, so I can kill two birds with one stone. That's a pretty horrible saying when you, saying when you think about it. Why would you ever want to kill birds? Sure, maybe seagulls, when I'm by the seaside with some fish and chips, and they're kind of trying to swoop in and steal it. Possibly, then, I wouldn't mind throwing a stone at some seagulls. Oh, sorry, I just went off on one. Well, that's quite useful, actually, because this tank does have a very long reload. So we put one into the Emil 2 there. You might notice, how did he manage to get the shot on me? He actually had to wedge his tank up a slope to be able to engage me. And now we take on a T-54E1. We're up to 3k damage in the first four minutes of this game. And I'm going to faff for a little while here. Well, I, I know I usually faff with my commentary in my videos, but I'm actually going to faff in-game as well. I'm just trying to sneak that extra shell in. And I've definitely spent longer than 10 seconds, right? The way that I look at it is each one of these shells in the Emil 2 is, is probably worth about maybe 10 to 12 seconds of reloading because the reload time is 40 seconds base. Your crew skills will get that down to maybe about 35. And then you have to spend the 10 seconds actually unloading the magazine, right? So really, from when you fired your last shot, it's probably going to be about 45 seconds if you've got good crew skills before you can complete firing your next magazine. And so that's the way that I look at it. Uh, each one of these shells is roughly about 12 seconds of reloading. And so when you're making a decision, shall I reload now when I've only got one left? Shall I try and squeeze the extra one in? Well, I think you, you probably need to ask yourself, am I going to be able to shoot something in the next 10 seconds? And if the answer is no, then it's quite likely that you probably should reload. Now, of course, there are situ situational circumstances. When, for example, there's a, a tank on a single shot who might be looking to come and try and catch you while you're reloading, then sure, you might want to hold the shell. But apart from that, reload often, and then you can have all of your rounds ready for when you need to go to town on tier 8 premium vehicles like this Liberté. He bounces his first shell, puts his second one in, unfortunately, but we shut him down. And I really wish I hadn't missed that first shot or bounced it off that Liberté because I might have been able to put it into the, the T-54. But luckily this 5120 comes and backs me up and so the T-54 on the enemy team doesn't have the cojones I guess to be able to charge into two auto-loading tier 9 heavy tanks. And just look how much smaller I am in the 5120, sorry in the Emil 2. That's one thing that not a lot of people take into account is these Swedish auto-loading heavy tanks are actually quite sleek. 
The Emil is massively smaller than the Emil too, as you might have seen if you saw my tank review on that a couple of weeks ago. But just don't take them for granted, at least their size. They're quite small targets and that can be a, a key skill within its own right. So right now, this game is neck and neck, even though I've done 4,300 damage and picked up four kills on some of the, shall we say, most statistically and experienced player, well, statistically strong and experienced players on the enemy team, but we're still going to have to put our, keep our carry pants on at least, or maybe even put on another layer so that we can carry a little bit harder here. Now, what am I worried about? Well, I'm worried about the T-54 finding me. I'm worried about those artillery splashing me. I'm also worried about that ST-1. That ST-1 in the center might make his way around the side, and if he goes here, he's got easy shots all the way along here. Or alternatively, if he sits here, he can still get some crossfire along here or alternatively support the T-54 there. Now, there's also a T-30 on the enemy team. That T-30 might be trundling his way along here, or alternatively, he might be coming here to make this position as well. And so what I want to do is hopefully put some pressure on the SD-1, try and get my artillery firing, hopefully take out the T-54. And while the camera rating on the Emil 2 certainly isn't the best, you can still manage to try and use some bushes to extend your view range and then hopefully pull back behind them to be able to eliminate your opponent. Now that T-30, luckily for me, has decided that he doesn't want to pressure the, the central part of this cliff map. Instead, he's going to be making his way down the west, and I'm just praying that my WTR Panzer IV will be able to finish him off with the artillery support. But there's the T-54, he's above me, and remember, my gun elevation is terrible. I am in a dire situation here, completely panicked, wondering how can I take somebody who has the high ground? It's like Obi-Wan Kenobi and I'm Anakin right now. And I, don't th I think the only way that I'm going to be able to get him is if I make my way up the slope and I take him out and then I take the high ground and then hopefully I can go up to the T-30. But luckily for me, I don't need to go up to the T-30 anymore. And that's because the WTR Panzerfear on my team shuts him down, but I get spotted by the ST-1 who is still remaining in that same position and I need to hightail backwards as quickly as I can to try and avoid the artillery. Try and wedge my vehicle up, hopefully the artillery misses me. Maybe the artillery was focusing on the tank destroyers towards the, the southwest of the map and that gives me an opportunity to maybe see if I can slip my way up this slope to be able to go after the T-54. But remember, the Emil 2 doesn't really have a very good power to ton ratio. Its ground resistances are okay, but not fantastic. And so that means it'll be quite tricky for me to be able to slip up there. But oh my word, what a result. Saved by the Bat Chat 155. 55 there. He shuts down the T-54 and that completely changes everything. Now, it's only really the super pershing that I, I don't know what he's going to be doing. There's no way that ST-1 is going to plow around that corner into me without having artillery support. He's probably going to sit here. Maybe he'll go to this location around here and try and poach around the corner and prepare for me to go around the back. But I decide that he's probably sitting there anyway and I'm going to try and slip my way around the northeast corner now knowing that the base is well and truly defended. Now it's been a long time since we've shot anything but sometimes that is the kind of situations you're going to have to get yourself into in the mill too. And just get a feel for the engine power here. While this vehicle's top speed is 56 kilometers an hour, we're certainly not going at 56 kilometers an hour right now and that's why I feel things like off-road driving in this tank are so important because you really need to try and break down the ground resistances of this tank to their lowest point so you can try and cut through that off-road terrain as much as you can to be able to even get close to your your 56 km an hour top speed limit. And it's not unless you're going downhill that you really can ever use that. And apart from that, I'd say the Emil 2 kind of gets round at about 35-40 tops. That's certainly not bad by any standards, but it's not 51-20 fast, and it's certainly not as fast as a T-54E1 could be getting around. Now you might have noticed that I've reloaded a heat magazine here, and that's because I'm engaging uh, an ST-1, that tier 9 Soviet heavy tank, and I guess this is where he has fairly bad view range, or at least he's maybe not using coated optics and have as good crew skills as me. So I can push forwards, spot the ST-1, and then I'm going to try and pull back and see if I can get some free shots into him. And I want to hit the side of the turret with these heat rounds, they've got 300 millimeters of pen. There's the first shot, by the second one at the front of the tank, oh it tracks him in place, will I be able to get the next one in? Yeah, there we go, great stuff. Now reload the APCR rounds. These heat rounds are very useful for going through super heavy tanks like that ST-1. With 300 millimeters of penetration, that's not great though, is it? 
You'd be hoping for your premium rounds on this tank to have about 330, 340 like the M103's heat rounds, for example. And a uh, bit of a sad story, but if you're planning on getting the Kranvang, it doesn't get any better when you play on the tier 10 Swedish autoloading heavy. And 300, while it's still great, certainly isn't as good as some of the other vehicles, like the, the T57 heavy, for example. Nevertheless, I think that was a, a wise investment there against the ST1. My APCR rounds at long range probably going to... If, if I bounce a couple of rounds against him, uh, he can maybe just catch me reloading on the artillery cannon and I'm dead. But this is where this tank is just lovely. Aim time, aim time, aim time. There you go. One shot in and I've still got three left for whoever else is going to be here. I'm going to slip my way down the slope. That secured the top gun, but the game isn't over. I want to find that FV3805. And right now, I have to be honest, I hadn't quite got an ace tanker in the Emil 2 yet, and so I felt completely greedy. I wanted to try and get into position, I wanted the kills myself, and so in retrospect, this was a little bit of a, an aggressive play. Oh no, I missed one off the FV! Hopefully this rolls high. Oh, it doesn't. 665 damage from the tier 9 British self-propelled gun. That's certainly something that I won't regret about not getting hit in the new patch. The WTF Panzer IV finishes a strong game finishing off the Super Pershing as well as that T-30 earlier. And 5,700 damage, 7 kills. What a result for the Swedish Auto Loading Heavy. So this was my ace tanker for the Emil 2. We get a high caliber for the 5,763 damage that we dealt. Tank Sniper for dealing most of that at long range. And the Top Gun for the 7 kills that we achieved. This was 1,524 base experience points. I ricocheted some rounds. I hit all but one shot that we fired. And if you put yourself in the positions that I did in this game, that's unsurprising considering this vehicle has 252 millimeters of standard penetration and 300 on its heat rounds. And this is probably one of the best things about the tank compared to the Emil 1 and also compared to the T-54E1 for example. And while I did fire a whopping three heat rounds to kill my opposite number heavy, we made a decent 31,000 credit profit in this round of World of Tanks. So the Emil 2, is it a great tank that I would want to be continuously playing at tier 9? Well, probably not. And the reason for that is that having played the Kranvang, that feels just beautiful at tier 10. Just everything about the Kranvang is a little bit better than the Emil 2. And I feel like the Emil 1 at tier 8 feels like an absolute powerhouse. And jumping up from tier 8 to tier 9, it just doesn't feel like the Emil 2 has got quite enough statistics to make it attractive for me. Now, I'm in no way saying that the Emil 2 is a bad tank. If you play well in this vehicle, you can dominate rounds of World of Tanks. It's just that its tier 10 elder brother, the Kranvang, feels absolutely awesome and I don't mind giving up seeing tier 7 opponents. And its younger brother, the Emil 1, just feels so much sleeker, almost more novel and devastating at tier 8 than the Emil 2 does at tier 9. And so hopefully you enjoyed this tank review, or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please give it a like, I'd really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about the Emil 2. Have you got one yourself? Did you enjoy it? And how do you feel about my opinion that I love the Emil? The Emil 2, while it's great, just didn't quite hook me, but I love the Kranvang having played it. And as always, thank you so much for watching, you've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.